Konosuba is the top gear of anime with a quadro instead of a trio of goofy but true friends improvising their way out of the very disastrous situations they put themselves in. It's played like a carefully conducted dysfunctional orchestra with tons of visual and audio commentary and jokes all layered on top of each other. It's a show that means so much to me, so I thought I'd capture the feelings I've had for it for 7 years now before jumping into season 3. I'm counting both seasons 1 and 2 and our OVAs as a single entry here because you really do need both to make it work. Season 1 to set up the world and characters and season 2 to let them loose to their full potential. Heck, season 2's OVA is probably the only single episode OVA I'd ever give a 10 out of 10. It's a perfect microcosm of everything I like about Konosuba. Now, the basis of the show is a typical isekai world filled with RPG tropes, with the twist being that it's all about deconstructing or making fun of them. While such a thing comes dime a dozen these days, back in 2016 and 17 it was a nice change of pace and I've always appreciated pioneering efforts. But that alone wouldn't mean much if it was done badly. Thankfully, Studio Dean was in charge and they made sure to use the medium's audiovisual capabilities to its full potential with every frame and every second having something to watch or listen to and also thankfully, apparently, allegedly, they didn't play the story as straight or serious as in the light novels, disclaimer, I haven't read them. So Konosuba ends up having what I like the most in anime. Engagement, movement, drawing my attention at all times because even one missed second is potentially a missed joke. The person guiding this visual presentation in Konosuba is the show's key animator and character designer Koichi Kikuta, a person heavily influenced by Fuli Kuli and Takahiro Kishida's art, and you can definitely tell. Not only does Konosuba follow the Gainax slash Trigger philosophy of prioritizing movement over staying on model, characters are also animated in a goofy, scrunkly style that lets them literally burst out of their line art, like during Aqua's famous rant in Season 2's Episode 6. Mother's Basement did a whole What's in an OP episode on Konosuba 2 that explains all of this in detail, and if you want more info on Trigger's approach to animation, I recommend Ig Studios' Kill La Kill's Inventive Animation. But the point is, the show never lacks visual appeal, and the added jankiness has the benefit of amplifying the impact of beauty shots or on-model shots when they do show up. The visual presentation is all in service of the humor, with a joke structure reminiscent of the comedy style used by the Zucker Abraham Zucker or Zaz Trio, who made famous movies in the 80s and 90s such as Airplane or The Naked Gun. Those movies are even more joke dense with so much visual comedy in every scene I can do an H-bomber length video on them, but the key here are two main principles. First, every joke or little scene or remark is somehow relevant to a future joke or scene, even if it's something completely random in the background or a throwaway line. For instance, Frank Drebin, the protagonist, driving through a zoo and letting the animals loose only for a random escaped lion that comes out of literally nowhere to kill the main antagonist. Konosuba follows a similar idea, so you have entire episode link jokes, like Kazuma using Drain Touch on Megumi, leaving her unable to use her magic later in the episode and causing the whole Princess Runner disaster, or even season link jokes, like when those two girls following the reincarnated guy from season 1 testify that Kazuma was acting all sleazy back during their encounter, and then a random guy mentioning that, yeah, he saw it, he was there too, while the camera hilariously zooms into a pixelated view of his face. And just like Zaz movies, the jokes have a 1-2-3 punchline setup, where every layered joke gets progressively more incredible, ridiculous, and bombastic, like Frank driving into things, first casually hitting some cars and bins, and then knocking people off and causing his car to explode. And the same is true for Konosuba. That whole Princess Runner mess starts with Kazuma explaining his genius plan and Aqua ruining it, Megumi proclaiming she will save it and then ruining it as well, and then Darkness standing bravely to defend them all and then being overrun in 0.1 seconds. Or the whole trial scene, having three witnesses with ever more quick and irrelevant testimonies. The second Zass principle is to take the world as seriously as possible, even to the point of being literally literal. This works especially well for Konosuba since its entire premise is to be a parody and meta commentary on isekai and RPG tropes. So you have Kazuma giving his deadpan, uh, no, actually, he seems like he's in pain, or mm, no, that's a bad idea, while everyone else is acting like in any other show. But almost like a Looney Tune, when things do go down, everyone takes advantage of the ridiculous situation and doesn't even question or comment on it. Like, 
How can you play with a Dullahan's head? Or how can the Axis cultists offer a washing machine as a gift? This is a medieval world! Speaking of characters, our main cast is, yeah, a horribly dysfunctional group of protagonists, but something I've come to appreciate is how their personalities shine through in unexpected moments and contrast with their dysfunctional sides. Like Kazuma acting all coy and boastful when interacting with a girl, only to burst out in egocentrism and bragging when she shows more interest in someone else, contrasting his usual rationality and calmness as a fourth wall breaker and trope subverter. This makes them feel a lot more human. They're not played straight, nor are they pure parody. They're imperfect, and them having to live with their imperfections and each other's imperfections is why I want to see how they'll deal with whatever comes their way, and also why they remind me of the Top Gear trio. It's always fun seeing these personality traits like Aqua's skill with random creative tasks of which she's genuinely proud, contrasting with her utter destructive attempts to help during the main plot. Darkness is always calm and collected and understanding in these moments, the literal opposite of every other time she's a masochist horn dog. And Megumin always acts mature and critical of childish behavior, which is very rich coming from someone who can't help but press buttons and win arguments. I get a real sense of parasocial friendship with them by the end of all this. It certainly helps that their characters are voiced by insane talent, such as the legendary Kaneo Ai as Darkness and Sora Amamiya as Aqua, the then newcomer Takahashi Rie as Megumin, and the veteran Fukushima Jun as Kazuma, who all seem to be having so much fun voicing these characters and tying their performances into the brilliant visual direction with some iconically timed music really amplifies the whole experience. And hey, even the English dub is fantastic and works just as well. Every rewatch just reminds me that this is a production that oozes with fun, care, and laughs with a group that's silly but sincere, a world that's wild but interesting, it makes me want to see more, it brings me such a profound sense of peace and satisfaction, it has for many years and likely will for many more. So thank you Studio Dean and everyone involved for the blessing on this truly wonderful world that is Konosuba.